All right, so once upon a time, we were looking at cylindrical coordinates, and we looked at this idea of the different coordinate surfaces. So if you fix one of the variables in that coordinate system and say, okay, fix is equal to a constant, what does it look like? Right? And so for Cartesian, you fix x equal to a constant, you get a copy of the uh, yz plane kind of at that location on the axis. You fix y equal to a constant, you get a copy of this uh, xz plane shifted out that far. And if you fix z equal to something, then you get a copy of the xy plane moved up to that location. So what is it for spherical coordinates? Well, let's see. So uh, for spherical coordinates, we're looking at rho, phi, theta. And again, rho is the distance to the origin. Phi is the angle coming down from the North Pole. And theta is the same thing as it is in, in cylindrical. So in other words, how far you rotated about the z-axis. So let's see, so if we were to fix like rho equals three or something like that, then we're looking at all points that are distance three from the origin. And that's gonna form a sphere, wah, or an egg, apparently. Oh, there we go, perfect sphere. Um, so there's the, hmm, well, my uh, equator's not looking so hot. Let me try that again. There we go. Beautiful equator. Perfect, beautiful equator. I love it when it works right. Okay, so that's what it looks like for, for when rho is fixed equal to a constant. And now let's ask the question of when phi is uh, fixed equal to a constant. So this is, again, where phi comes into play. It's this angle uh, coming down from the North Pole. And remember, crucial thing, you always begin here on the vertical axis and swing this way. It's not how high you are above the horizon, it's how far down you've come from the North Pole. So anyways, I mean, it's this angle here, not the complementary angle here. Okay, so this one, let's see. So if, now think about this for a moment. Where are all of the points at this angle from the vertical? Well, so you could be in that angle in any direction. So for instance, if I draw the arc in, in the uh, YZ plane over here, it would be you know at the same angle over here. And if I drew this arc so that it came down at some point over here in, in the, uh, the middle of the plane, it would be over here. And so you can see like all these points, they would form a ring around, or a circle around uh, the vertical axis. And we're not specifying um, what rho is, oh, I forgot to write the equation, I'm sorry. So this is like rho, or sorry, phi equals maybe um, uh, like pi over six, I guess is what I'm drawing here, something that looks like that, or maybe pi over four. Um, okay, and so it's actually going to give me a cone because I can be any of these, I can be anywhere along uh, any one of these lines going in any of these directions as long as the line is at an angle of phi with the vertical. So. Um, sketching that out a little more, it's actually this entire cone of points here. These are all the points that are at an angle of uh, pi over 6 from the vertical. Okay, so that's what the coordinate surface for phi looks like. Uh, and then if we go and look at like, okay, so what is a coordinate surface for theta? Then theta, remember, is how far you are rotated around uh, the z-axis starting from the positive x. And so the collection of all points that are rotated this far is going to actually look the same as it did for cylindrical coordinates. It's going to be this, this plane right here. that's, that's um, tilted kind of, but contains the, uh, the vertical axis. This, this axis lies in that plane. All right, so that's a fixed, uh, fixed value of theta. Okay, those are the coordinate surfaces, the most basic ones. So if you, once again, if you, if you see, uh, if you're setting up a region for spheric, or if you're setting up a region for a triple integral, and you notice that it's got like spherical surfaces or it's got these cones and stuff like that, or maybe even a slanted plane, although that's less common, then um, it's probably a good candidate for 
being set up in spherical coordinates. Um, let's just look at one other kind of surface in spherical to sort of understand this. Suppose somebody said, okay, um, rho equals 2a cosine phi. What is that surface in spherical coordinates? So here, this is, this is uh, a is some, some fixed parameter. We'll require it to be positive so it doesn't get beastly. Um, something like this. Okay, so what do you notice about this? Well, first, first observation maybe is that this is uh, independent of theta. So it's gonna be rotationally symmetric around the z-axis. That's a general rule of thumb, right? Right, okay, so rotationally symmetric or radially symmetric, whichever you like. Um, and it's not totally clear what to do with this, but what I always like to do is I say, okay, so let's take a look at this formula and say, okay, where can we find places to work in our, our formulas that we know? So we know that rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And we know that x is supposed to be rho sine phi uh, cosine theta. And y is supposed to be rho sine phi sine theta. And z is rho cosine phi. And just in case it happens to be helpful, we have this side tidbit that rho uh, r, the radius, is um, rho sine phi. Um, so what can we have happen here? Okay, so we look at all this junk here, and the thing that pops out to me is that we've got a cosine of phi with no thetas, and the same is true for z over here. So compare these two. Like, what is the difference between these two guys? Well, z has a rho, and the one we're looking at does not. But as is always often with the case with math, if it don't fit, force it. So if I just multiply this across by rho, boom things get a lot nicer in a hurry. So on the left side, I see something that matches. And on the right side, I see something that matches. And now I can start making substitutions. So let's see. So um, now on the left, we've got x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And on the right, we have 2 times a times, and then rho cosine phi is z. So I have this one. All right, what can I do now? Well, now I could do the old trick of moving the z term over onto the left and completing the square. So I go to x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2az equals 0. But I can also add a squared to both sides to complete the square. And then what does this give me? So now I've got uh, x squared plus y squared plus z minus a quantity squared equals a squared. So now this is going to be a sphere. And it's going to have, it's going to be a sphere of radius a and the center is going to be at 0, 0, A. All right, so then that tells me, let's sketch this puppy. If I go vertically up to A on the, the Z axis here, uh, then it's going to have radius A. So it's going to be touching um, the origin just like that come to pop up. Okay, there we go. Um, and then, yeah, so it's tangent to the origin. Uh, close. Okay, there we go. That's, that's as good as I'm going to get that picture. Um, so there's our little object. Fantastic.